Walter J. Jacobs was a man with a vision. He single-handedly transformed the small coffee distillery his uncle had founded into Germany's foremost coffee-producing company. Walter Jacobs had a vision in his private life as well. His own pedigree being full of horse people, he in the 1960s bought a stud in North Germany where heavy horses had been raced before. Experts dismissed his chances of breeding fast thoroughbred horses there as the soil was thought to be too sandy and poor. Mr. Jacobs would prove the opposite. A basis for his overwhelming success would be a shrewd acquisition of some broodmares at the sales in Newmarket. In 1988, one of his broodmares gave birth to a little chestnut colt that was to be named Lumitas. His looks and conformation immediately raised some hopes. After growing to become a two-year-old, he was duly put into training with young and ambitious Bremen-bound trainer Andreas Wöhler. Andreas was handed a huge chance here. Due to the untimely death of his father, he was forced to take over a big training establishment much earlier than he would have wanted. Andreas was only in his second year as a public trainer when Lomitas arrived in his yard in the end of 1989. At the age of two, Lomitas was entered up for a juvenile event in Hanover. It was then that the first hint of a serious problem would start to unearth. Lumitas would not enter the horse box, as simple as that. So he did not run. Lumitas was entered up again for a little maiden race. He was trained the normal way to enter his transport, was driven to the racetrack and won. Lomitas was quick to establish himself as a leading two-year-old in Germany in 1990. He had two starts and won them both, writing his name firmly on the list of winter favorites for the German Derby of 1991. Lomitas führt gleich mit zwei Längen vor Iris Dew. Lomitas klar vorne jetzt schon vor Iris Dew. Dahinter kommt Ferry Dancer und Ingrid Basualdo. Aber Lomitas ist klar vorne. Lomitas löst sich hier auf klaren Vorsprung. Lomitas ganz klar vorne. Lomitas klar vorne gewinnt den Arab Juniorenpreis. Überlegen vor Ferry Dancer dann Iris Dew, Basualdo, Lonely Love. An ambitious campaign was planned for him with the German Derby being the main target for Lomitas' three-year-old campaign. Having practiced to enter the starting stalls at home, nobody did see any problems arising as Lomitas was driven to Krefeld for his first race of the season. In the Bush Memorial, it took the handlers 20 minutes to finally persuade Lomitas to enter the stalls. <laughs> Das Feld ist jetzt Ausgangs des Schlussbogens und erreicht in diesem Moment den Einlauf. Nur etwas mehr als 400 Meter sind zurückzulegen. Das Feld ist in breiter Formation. An der Innenseite Aufsteiger. In der Bahnmitte kommt jetzt Lomitas. Und Lomitas geht nach vorne. Lomitas ist vorne. Ganz außen wird jetzt Borrego Blues eingesetzt. Aber Lomitas ist vorne. Lomitas führt. Lomitas vor innen De Niro. Lomitas vor De Niro und Quaglino. Lomitas ist vorne. Lomitas. Lomitas führt mit zwei Längen, mit drei Längen. Lomitas. Lomitas löst sich hier, Lomitas gewinnt leicht vor Quaglino, dann De Niro vor Krom und Quaglino. Classic glory loomed for the first time as the German 2000 Guineas was firmly on the agenda now and Lomitas was driven to Cologne with high hopes. What followed was nothing short of a disaster. This time 20 minutes were not enough to press Lomitas into the stalls. The horse had made up his mind. He would not enter the stalls. With the major derby trials and the derby itself only weeks away, it became clear that this problem would not just vanish. The horse, for whatever reason, did not want to cooperate anymore and man would have to go down a different path in search for a solution. At this point, a certain Monty Roberts answers the story. He had just given a highly publicized show to the Queen of England, 
who in turn was deeply impressed by Monty's different approach to communicate with even the most unruly horses. Nobody had ever heard of him in Germany, and whispering to horses was certainly different to what horsemen had been doing to horses so far. But Monty got results and had a very good reputation. There was nothing to lose. It would be back to the drawing board for horse and handler. And Lomitas and his English work rider Simon Stokes had to go back to A and learn to communicate. The Monty way. Simon can recall his first lesson very clearly. It was a dark and rainy day, typical of a German summer, when Lomitas did get his first join-up lesson. Monty took him to a covered hall and closed the doors. Man and horse stayed in we for ready, four hours. Um, not knowing who he, who he is, what he does. And uh, he came and had two weeks to get Lomitas right before the derby. Uh, so we were under pressure. And they bonded and Monty did a join up, which I'd never seen before in my life. And uh, communicated and the horse loved As the derby drew closer, Lumitas was sent to the last possible trial, a listed race on his local track, Bremen. All watched in awe how a calm and reassuring Monty Roberts, being flown in by the Walter Jacobs especially for the race, took Lumitas' hat collar and slowly walked towards the starting stalls. 10,000 racegoers caught the moment and cheered up a horse who had just purely and simply entered the starting stall. 200 Meter vor der Linie, Lomitas an der Spitze. Lomitas und dahinter ist Rondo Mondo mit Le Jardin. Lomitas ist vorne. Rondo Mondo kämpft mit Le Jardin. Lomitas vorne und äh, Rondo Mondo kommt nicht ganz heran. Auf die letzten Meter wird er noch schnell. Aber Lomitas bleibt vorne, gewinnt mit knapp einer Länge vor Rondo Mondo. Le Jardin, dahinter große Abstand bis zu Coralito und auch sonst da. Simon, after getting lessons and joining up as well, was appointed as Lomita's guardian and continued the special training. It was all new to him, like going back to school and a totally new approach of dealing with horses for him as well. The Derby Lomita's was calm and content as he walked in the paddock and cantered down to the start, written by young English jockey Terry Hellyer, accompanied by Monty and Simon, as well as a nervous Andreas Wöhler the trainer. Lumitas behaved impeccably, as if there never was a problem, but a small but significant hiccup occurred yet again. This time when Lumitas wanted to jump out of the box, barely visible for the normal onlookers, Lumitas' door opened slightly prior to all the other boxes. And to save the day, Andreas Wöhler, in his nervousness, jumped forward to close it again, in a vain attempt to help. The derby was underway, though. The race developed nicely for Lomitas, and the jockey was able to settle him. He started to make a move on the outside once they rounded the final bend. But the danger was already there, looming right before him in the shape of yet another chestnut colt, ridden by a very young and not yet famous Frankie de Tori. The horse's name was Temporal. Temporal came into the straight full of running, and even though Lomitas tried in vain to close the gap and go past, he was never able to do so. Feeling the jockey's whip for the first time in his life, Lomitas did not stay straight, and when he changed gear it was too late. He came second. Lomitas would clean sweep the remaining Group 1 races in Germany, simply running away with them. The gross surprise von Baden, with a quality field assembled before the start, again in hot and humid weather. This time Lomitas would not simply win, he would destroy the field. Running away from them, being so superior that the commentator was lost for words, calling just Lomitas, 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 überlegen for temporal. Dritter ist weit, vierter Kresos, fünfter Old Top. Die deutschen Pferde alle vorne, eine super Leistung. Lomitas then won the grosser prize von Europa in Cologne. And there was a lot of talk whether he should be sent to Paris for a crack in the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. His wise owner did not want to rush a young horse, 
assuming there would be another edition to tackle Europe's most famous Wait for Age event. Lumitas was officially rated third best three-year-old in Europe and was voted Horse of the Year in Germany. Lumitas wintered well and ran two very good races in 1992, though got beat once. He came back to Hamburg to erase his second place in the derby out of the heads of the Hamburg crowd. And nobody did see the dark cloud that was to come nearer with every day, putting Lumita's racing career and ultimately his life in balance. Some time after Hamburg, a letter reached Walter Jacobs, claiming a huge amount of money and threatening to kill the horse if the claim was not met. People surely would not kill an innocent horse, but action was taken as Lomitas got a night watchman to protect his stable box regularly, and the police was informed as well. Lomitas' training regime went ahead as usual and was seemingly uninterrupted, and he was prepared for another crack in the Düsseldorf Group 1, the prize der Berliner Bank. Lomitas appeared calm and tranquil in the paddock. But his cold failed to sparkle that day. Lumitas was never traveling. He trailed in beaten oh so many lengths. And something was clearly horribly wrong. An anonymous letter followed the very next day, basically stating that this was the proof that we can get to the horse at any time and the run in Düsseldorf was just a warning. Worse would follow if the claim would not be met. A post-race examination by the vets showed unusually high blood counts in the horse's liver and kidney, proof that some poisonous substance has indeed been given to the horse. Lomita's life clearly was in danger. Very shortly after the Düsseldorf disaster, Simon received a confidential phone call from Mr. Jacobs. Lomita's clearly was not safe where he was, with danger all around him and the claim was taken very seriously now. Lomitas had been poisoned and Walter Jacobs was not prepared to just wait and see. He understood that he had to react. A private plane was hired and Lomitas, police escorted, was brought to the airport in the early hours of the given day. He would be gone and be safe before anybody would notice and because the whole departure was treated with the utmost secrecy, not even the trainer was informed, no chance was given to any wrongdoer who might come out of the yard itself to do further damage to the horse. Lomitas and Simon boarded the plane in Bremen, and as if the horse sensed the situation, he fully cooperated, never flinched and entered the plane with no hesitation, no sign of his old fears. The flight took them to England. In the hectic days that preceded this flight and the escape, out of the country contact was made, through Monty Roberts to Lester Pickett's yard. And it was to his premises that Lumitas and Simon went for rescue. Lumitas would be given a new name, Pirelli, so nobody was to know his real identity. He would be just another chestnut racehorse with his English work rider. It sounded simple but was a risk, yet the plan worked. Simon Stokes' diary notes an extra special workout in the middle of September 92, the day Lomitas gave indication that he started to pull all the trouble behind him. He worked like a proper racehorse that day. Everybody could see the progress the horse was making, and it would be only a matter of time before facts would be leaking out. Connections were keen not to reveal their true identity still, and it became clear that Lomitas had to move on. He was bred to be a racehorse, and his development and improvement showed that after all the threats and troubles, Lomitas still wanted to be one. But coming back to Germany was out of question, and England was too nearby, and not deemed to be safe. So Lomitas and Simon would move again, would board yet another plane that was to bring them both further away from criminal intent, further away from the danger. They would fly to America. Monty Roberts' part in this move cannot be underestimated. He arranged the horse to be put in proper training over in the States 
and chose Ron McAnally, a top racehorse trainer based in Santa Anita, California. Lomitas would have a job again. He would be a racehorse once more, as connections were keen to gain reward for the stolen time. Lumita's story does not end here. He was trained and did run in America. He raced four times, winning one small race, but ultimately paid the price for the drugs and poison in his body system, as his feet could not be cured properly and caused him trouble and pain. He was still ill. He needed a rest. So his life as a racehorse came to the end, but he was not disgraced. It was time for Lomitas to come home. It's the dream of every breeder to breed a horse good enough to come back to his home soil as a stallion, being able to pass on his superior genes to further generations. Lomitas was the champion Walter Jacobs had hoped for, and Lomitas did come back with his head held high. Lomitas started to cover his first season at his homestead Fairhof in 1994, closing a circle. He was born and raised here, took his first ungainly steps with his tiny hooves when he was born on the farm back in 1988, fully six years before. Lomitas wasted no time in proving just how good he was in his second career as well. His first crop included champion race horses Silvano, Belenos and Sumitas, Arlington Million winner, Derby winner and German 2000 Guineas winner in between them. And he has never looked back since. Lumitas died in 2010, aged 22. And what a legacy he left. It was his daughter Dane Dream who, among many top class races, stormed home to win the arc of 2011, thus winning the race he himself was denied to contest. His memories are golden, and he is much missed.